objects other than the objects being perceived will remain unperceived. The essential nature of mind is free from any partial perceiving, hence, suchness is spoken of as having the characteristic of illuminating the entire universe. When the mind is in motion, stirred by ignorance, it is characterized by illusions and defilements, outnumbering the sands of the Ganges, such as lack of true cognition, absence of self-nature, impermanence, blisslessness, impurity, fever, anxiety, deterioration, mutation, and lack of freedom. By contrast to this, the essential nature of mind, however, is motionless, i.e., undisturbed by ignorance, therefore, it can be inferred that it must have various pure and excellent qualities, outnumbering the sands of the Ganges. But if the mind gives rise to irrelevant thoughts and further predicates the world of objects, it will continue to lack these qualities. All these numberless excellent qualities of the pure principle are none other than those of one mind, and there is nothing to be sought after anew by thought. Thus, that which is fully endowed with them is called the Dharmakaya when manifested and the Tathagatagarbha when latent. See the greatness of the influences of suchness. The Buddha Tathagatas, while in the stages of bodhisattvahood, exercised great compassion, practiced paramithas, and accepted and transformed sentient beings. They took great vows, desiring to liberate all sentient beings through countless eons until the end of future time, for they regarded all sentient beings as they regarded themselves. And yet, they never regarded them as separate sentient beings. Why? Because they truly knew that all sentient beings and they themselves were identical in suchness and that there could be no distinction between them. Because they possessed such great wisdom which could be applied to expedient means in quest of enlightenment, they extinguished their ignorance and perceived the original Dharmakaya. Spontaneously performing incomprehensible activities, exercising manifold influences, they pervade everywhere in their identity with suchness. Nevertheless, they reveal no marks of their influences that can be traced as such. Why? Because the Buddha Tathagatas are no other than the Dharmakaya itself, and the embodiment of wisdom. They belong to the realm of the Absolute Truth, which transcends the world where the relative truth operates. They are free from any conventional activities. And yet, because of the fact that sentient beings receive benefit through seeing or hearing about them, their influences, i.e., of suchness, can be spoken of in relative terms. The influences of suchness are of two kinds. The first is that which is conceived by the mind of ordinary men and the followers of Hinayana, i.e., the influence of suchness as reflected in the object discriminating consciousness. This is called the influence of suchness in the form of the transformation body. Because they do not know that it is projected by the evolving mind, they regard it as coming from without, they assume that it has a corporeal limitation because their understanding is limited. The second is that which is conceived by the mind of the bodhisattvas, from the first stage of aspiration to the highest stage, i.e., the influence of suchness as reflected, in the mentality which regards external objects as unreal. This is called the influence of suchness in the form of the bliss body. It has an infinite number of corporeal forms, each form has an infinite number of major marks, and each major mark has an infinite number of subtle marks. The land where it has its abode has innumerable adornments. It manifests itself without any bounds, its manifestations are inexhaustible and free from any limitations. It manifests itself in accordance with the needs of sentient beings, and yet it always remains firm without destroying or losing itself. These excellent qualities were perfected by the pure permeation acquired by the practice of permithas and the superrational permeation of suchness. Since the influence is endowed with infinite attributes of bliss, it is spoken of as the bliss body. What is seen by ordinary men is only the coarse corporeal forms of the manifestation of suchness. Depending upon where one is in the six transmigratory states, his vision of it will differ. The visions of it conceived by the unenlightened beings are not in a form of bliss, this is the reason why it is called the transformation body, i.e., the body appearing in the likeness of the conceiver. The bodhisattvas in their first stage of aspiration and the others, because of their deep faith in suchness, have a partial insight into the nature of the influence of suchness. They know that the things of the bliss body, such as its corporeal forms, major marks, 
adornments, etc., do not come from without or go away, that they are free from limitations, and that they are envisioned by mind alone and are not independent of suchness. These bodhisattvas, however, are not free from dualistic thinking, since they have yet to enter into the stage where they gain complete realization of the Dharmakaya. If they advance to the stage of pure-heartedness, the forms they see will be subtler and the influences of suchness will be more excellent than ever. When they leave the last stage of bodhisattvahood, they will perfect their insight into suchness. When they become free from the activating mind, they will be free from the perceiving of duality. The Dharmakaya of the Buddhas knows no such thing as distinguishing this from that. Question, if the Dharmakaya of the Buddhas is free from the manifestation of corporeal form, how can it appear in corporeal form? Answer, since the Dharmakaya is the essence of corporeal form, it is capable of appearing in corporeal form. The reason this is said is that from the beginning corporeal form and mind have been non-dual. Since the essential nature of corporeal form is identical with wisdom, the essence of corporeal form which has yet to be divided into tangible forms is called the wisdom body. Since the essential nature of wisdom is identical with corporeal form, the essence of corporeal form which has yet to be divided into tangible forms is called dharmakaya, pervading everywhere. Its manifested corporeal forms have no limitations. It can be freely manifested as an infinite number of bodhisattvas, buddhas of bliss body, and adornments in the ten quarters of the universe. Each of them has neither limitation nor interference. All of these are incomprehensible to the dualistic thinking of the deluded mind and consciousness, for they result from the free influence of suchness. 3. From samsara to nirvana. Lastly, how to enter into the realm of suchness from the realm of samsara will be revealed. Examining the five components, we find that they may be reduced to matter and mind. The objects of the five senses and of the mind are in the final analysis beyond what they are thought to be and the mind itself is devoid of any form or mark and is, therefore, unobtainable as such, no matter where one may seek it. Just as a man, because he has lost his way, mistakes the east for the west, though the actual directions have not changed place, so people, because of their ignorance, assume mind to be what they think it to be, though mind in fact is unaffected even if it is falsely predicated. If a man is able to observe and understand that mind is beyond what it is thought to be, then he will be able to conform to and enter the realm of suchness.